Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Today uh, we're going to talk about fantastic plastic, which is how can we predict some of the problems in injection molding and um, what the solution to, um, to avoid these problems in early beginning before moving to the mold and having a lot of cost. So, uh, first, I'm, I need to make sure that uh, everyone is hearing me well. And please, if you have any question during the webinar, just feel free to, to ask. Even with an Arabic language, that's fine. You can just put your question in, in the question area. So, let's get started. Today agenda, we will discuss the common injection molding defects and we will have an overview about the solution which is SOLIDWORKS Plastics and then we will go in the details into the 10 steps that uh, we can solve some of these problems and then we will get to the conclusion. Starting with the common injection molding defects, maybe the first one we can uh, um, show an example of it which is the short shot. The short shot actually, when whenever you are increasing the pressure, whenever you are increasing the temperature, whenever you are even changing the material, sometimes you will still have this problem. That's at the end of the fell, actually the whole cavity, it's not ended to, to the last point and you still have some empty areas that you cannot reach it. The melted polymers cannot reach, reach it. And in this case, uh, you will have a big problem because you may consider a lot of options. And as I said, if, even if you are changing the pressure, if you are increasing the temperature, these areas will not be filled completely. The second problem could be the diesel effect. And the diesel effect will be represented as a burned mark on the surface of the plastic part and in here it's 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 having an excessive burning temperature and it may cause by a, a friction between and the speed of the flow that this, this part has been injected with wet lines wet lines is a cosmetic problem and also it's a structural effects and normally the wood lines is being detected when a, a flow front is meeting together after a hole or maybe an empty area inside your a plastic part. So as we can see here for example if the part is injected from this direction and the flow front come into this direction we are expecting a wood line here. And Actually, it's, it's a structural defect. It's not only cosmetic because this is the weakness point inside your part. We are expecting that this area will be a little bit weak than the others. Sink marks. Sink marks when you have a, a defects in, in, in the most of the material, when you have um, a non-uniform thickness and when when reaching the areas that you can find uh, a variation in the thickness, uh, a thicker area, let's say, and here you will find that after the shrinkage of the material, you will find some beaks in, in your part. And we are defining that as a, as a sink marks. And the cosmetic defects actually is it's on the surface of of the, flat, the plastic parts and of course you can see that clearly in most of of the, the plastic parts that have deviation and different thickness. Ejector marks, that's most of the common um, injection molding defects and uh, when you have a lot of ejectors or maybe are, you are trying to eject your part uh, uh, with, a, with a high force from the ejected plate, you will find these ejector pin marks. And uh, this is again uh, a, a problem of uh, uh, the shrinkage could be the, 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 prop, the, the main reason 
of this problem uh, because the part sticked into uh, the mold and cannot be ejected easily so you have to act with a high amount of force to eject your part and this is of course will keep some marks uh, uh, on the uh, ejector locations warp edge the warp edge is uh, after packing sta the stage the process of the packing so after uh, releasing your mold and open your uh, the, the plates and then even ejected the part you can notice some warpage in the material um, actually today maybe we will not talk more about the warpage and the shrinkage problems however um, just to uh, list that the common the common problems another problems problem that you can find it in your plastic part is the bubbles um, and the air gaps actually there these air gaps are uh, presented inside the surface so it's not outside in, in the surface area of of the part the problem when it comes inside the part and it's really it's hard to be detected even you cannot notice sometimes you cannot notice after uh, injecting your plastic part you cannot notice this area however you have to cut your part into halves to be able to see them cooling cycle let's explain that in details because in the mold cycle you have a couple of processes for example starting from uh, the mold close which for example could be from one to two seconds and then the injection could be from two to five seconds let's say and uh, going through the the back and hole so we are we're keeping uh, the mold still close after even the end of the fell um, just for uh, keeping all the shrinkage and the material kept keep inside because if we are opening the part that fast we are not um, maybe um, the, uh, predicting how it's going to be deformed and the most of of the cycle is the cooling cycle and the cooling cycle could be represented as um, from 45 to even up to 70 percent of the cooling cycle so if we are considering that and let's consider that's for example one shot of injection will last for 60 seconds imagine that that's um, more than 40 seconds will be detected for the cooling cycle and if we are reducing the cooling cycle of course this will present us with with more effective mold um, and and of course you are you are you know that that's when you are selling your mold base when you are getting a rotation even for for your mold mold base and to do an injection mold the most factor that's differentiate you uh, between you and the others the other competitors in in the market is how long it takes for you to um, inject your part in in the mold so if the other competitor will provide the less time it means that um, he won the game he win he win the competition so our goal as a mold maker and our goal as even a part designer is to reduce the cooling cycle as much as possible because this is will lead definitely to aggressively decreasing the cooling cycle so we end up the, with with the common defects in the molds and we need to discuss now why do we need uh, to do that why do we need a solution to do that because in the plastic design most probably the process would be starting from the part design going to the mold design and then the mold manufacturing part production and part product launch the problem is the cost of change in in the early in early process it's is very low however if you keep continuing um, uh, with the problem the cost of the change at the end of the process would be very high so it's it's not easy to change the mold manufacturing 
it's not it should change as well the mold design and according to that and the impact of change in the early stage is very high so when you detect your problem in early stage you will be able to reduce your cost in in the, um, um, in the latest stage and that's why we, we need to think about SOLIDWORKS plastics um, in SOLIDWORKS plastics we could have multiple packages the first package we can introduce it to you as the SOLIDWORKS plastic standard and this is most probably for part designers um, and using SOLIDWORKS plastic standard you will be able to understand how long it takes for this part to fail and you will be able to understand is there a weld lines in the part um, that I'm designing and what about the air gaps so all of these questions you can easily answer them in, in the early stage of the part design so it's it's not only for mold makers remember even if you are a plastic designer you will need to use SOLIDWORKS plastic in early stage because what the process is after creating your plastic part you are simply send it to the mold manufacturer and simply he can say to you sorry we cannot manufacture that you had you have to increase the thickness and you have been built your design concept according to a lot of criteria and they cannot simply change the thickness of the part you are the only one the designer uh, who is making the concept design who will be able to understand how long or what's the, the criteria of changing the thickness so it's simulating the mold filling stage it's optimizing the designs for manufacturing and determine the best gate locations moving to the SOLIDWORKS professional and SOLIDWORKS plastic professionals it's valid for mold designers and mold makers as well um, because it can simulate the filling and packing stage, stage so it's not only the filling we we can go further and understand the packing stage and remember that the shrinkage uh, value will be understand better in the backing stage not in the filling stage so um, also we can optimize single and multi-cavity mold um, layout mold we can even um, understand better the family mold and in SOLIDWORKS plastic professional we can simulate the insert over molding and the two-shot molding the gas assets and the valve gates so moving to the big guy which is SOLIDWORKS plastic plastics premium so in SOLIDWORKS plastic premium of course we can do whatever the capabilities that exist in SOLIDWORKS plastics professional and SOLIDWORKS plastics standard plus simulating the cooling cycle the real cooling cycle and we have mentioned that how is important to understand the cooling cycle time but what about the cool, cooling cycle arrangement is it going to be a zigzag type or maybe it's a linear type or what is the diameter that you need for the cooling cycle so nowadays we are doing that and um, if we don't have if we don't have a simulation software like SOLIDWORKS plastics nowadays we are doing that using only uh, uh, our expertise so uh, we are maybe some companies they have their their own expertise and in, in the mold and they are advising to do it in this way or another way um, but using SOLIDWORKS plastic premium we can understand that and even deep diving in the warpage analysis so what will be the shrinkage in the x-axis and the y-axis and z-axis in all directions so if you have a, have a warpage a real warpage problem in your plastic part in this case we have to go in deep analysis with SOLIDWORKS plastics premium so what we have discussed so far is the problems and the solutions and we need to, to um, show cases and to understand how can we and and 10 steps maybe we will not go into deep details in the last step but i will explain um, um, much more in the nine steps what do we need to do 
first step is to do the meshing. And because of SOLIDWORKS plastics at the end of the day, it's, it's a, a CFD solutions and finite element analysis solutions. So um, this type of, of simulation, uh, it needs a meshing. And we call that a pre-processing stage. So the pre-processing stage could be simplifications on the part and also uh, the meshing, which is a real processing type. In SOLIDWORKS plastics, we could have two type of mesh. Uh, the first one is the solid mesh, and the second one is the shell. And in each one of them, we can have automatic mesh and manual mesh. So I will try in, in this demonstration to go through the manual mesh, and uh, let's explain some aspects. So first, why do we need to go to the shell mesh instead of solid mesh. As I'm doing uh, initial analysis, I, I, this is my initial design and I need to understand is it going to be fell really or not. So in the initial stage, no need to go and to do a lot of work and, and meshing. So the best way to do that is the fastest way to do it. And after making multiple trials, if you find your your solution is near to the result that you are predicting uh, and you need. In this case, go farther and have uh, the best mesh ever you, you would like to have. Um, but in early stage, I'm not recommending to have a solid mesh. Always go with the shell mesh in the initial stage. So we, are, we have to understand the triangle size and also SOLIDWORKS plastics can have a better understanding of making an automatic mesh. So without automatic mesh, you will have you would, you will not have uh, a better meshing in the controlled area, which is the area that have a small edges. But with the automatic mesh, yes, you can do that. You can mesh the narrow areas uh, the way uh, that uh, could give the best result. And this is the main reason of using automatic mesh, even. Um, an early beginning without having without have to go to the manual mesh. So second step is to select the material and in SOLIDWORKS plastics you can choose the material of more than 5,000 material in the library. So moving to the polymers and you can even sort them by family uh, EPS, PC, and even you can search. For example, I'm searching for a PC type material, and then if you click find, you will find that all type of the material related to the PC and even with the manufacturer. So selecting the material, of course, selecting all the mechanical and physical properties of the material, and even you can sort by the company. So, um, for example, you can choose Aramco material or maybe you know the material tab that uh, Aramco is, uh, are producing, and then just select the material. Second step is to go through the process. And this is a tricky option, because if you are a mold maker, yes, uh, um, and if you are doing injection mold, so yes, you have to go to the fill settings and to uh, adjust the fill settings exactly the way that your machine is acting. However, if you are just a part designer, no need to do that because once you select the material, SOLIDWORKS plastics will understand what will be the optimum uh, uh, melt temperature and the optimum mold temperature and maybe the injection pressure needed. So it will give the maximum injection pressure needed for, for that material. If you change the material, of course, the melt temperature will be changed and the mold temperature will be changed. Um, regarding the filling time, it's giving you initial value and it will be simulated and the final stage we will see the results. Maybe the results will not be 1.56. However, if you need to adjust your filling time, if you need to constrain your filling time not to exceed a certain limit, in this case, you can put the value here. And instead of 1.5, you need 
to be uh, the fill time only to be in one second. So according to the other parameters, SOLIDWORKS Plastics will try maybe to increase the melting temperature. It will try to increase the injection pressure uh, limits. And to do that in SOLIDWORKS Plastics is very easy. Just go underneath the process parameters and um, double click the fill settings and then adjust your parameters. Next step is to assign the gate. And to assign the gate, you have to select a gate locations. And you have to adjust the gate diameter. And of course, there is the, the ability to have automatic, automatically added location. But again, this is still tricky because always when when any simulation, the SOLIDWORKS plastic would advise uh, to have automatic add, uh, add locations. By default, it's added the location at the most of the thick areas of your parts. Um, so you can adjust how many gates you need to have and then SOLIDWORKS plastics can give you all the locations of these gates. However, today we would not assign that automatically. I will do that through selecting a certain point. And also remember here when selecting an edge, Sordox Plastic is not selecting an edge, it's selecting the location of the mesh. So um, the best way to select the gate location when you show the mesh model. So you can understand where exactly the, the mesh element that will be located on the gates. And please do not forget to click Add Locations after selecting the location and, of course, the gate diameter. Step 5. Step 5 is to hit Run. And to run that, um, that scenario, this could take, for example, one minute. And, of course, um, you have the ability to tell, for example, if, if you have SOLIDWORKS Premium, um, are you really in, intend to have only the flow or maybe flow and back or maybe flow and back and warpage? And during the analysis, the good thing about SOLIDWORKS Plastics that give you the stage of the fill. Um, so when your part will be filling 50% and 60%. And the process at which time um, and even you can preview some of the parameters uh, during the fill. So you can, in early beginning, understand um, how is going to be your, your fillings, your fill process. And the melted polymers, how it's going to be act inside your parts. Previously, without, without SOLIDWORKS plastics, the problem is this is a really a black box and we cannot even understand how the melted polymers can go through uh, the, the cavity inside the mold. But using SOLIDWORKS plastics today is very easy. Moving to this, uh, to the steps number six, we need to view the results. And the best way to view the results is through the mold advisor. Really, the mold advisor is um, one of the initial results that you can understand it um, easily. That's, for example, here is telling that this part can be successful filled with an injection pressure of 35. So the, the injection will be completed and we will not need the 100 megapascal that we assign it to the process. However, only 35 pascal, megapascal would be enough. And it's even explaining and in each and every result, it's explaining what that result means. What does it mean fill of time? So, and, and how does SOLIDWORKS Plastics is interacting with the fill, fill time? So it's, it's a good explanation, especially for the beginners to understand what's going on. And also you can repeat and play animation of, of the uh, flow front and um, let's move to step seven which is detecting the defects so after viewing 
the basic of the results. We need to understand where is the defect. So first you need to go to the world line and look to the uh, how many world lines do you have and even understanding that the world lines, if it's um, with an angle that's crossing the material, it means that this is the weakness point. This is the weakness point. So I'm having here a lot of world lines in my part, which is I'm not happy with that. So I need to solve this problem. A second problem is the cooling time. We need to reduce it because moving to the cooling time, I found that it's 20 seconds and the fill time is actually two seconds. So we are representing more than 70% of the cooling time as the mold cycle. So we need to change that as well. Step seven, again, we are still detecting the problems. Um, and the pressure at the end of fill actually it's is 45.9 megapascal. Also, I need to change that because um, thinking about the pressure, I don't need the the, the mold injection machine is to get the maximum the maximum of the parts. So we need to change that as well. So um, here we go. We have a lot of problems that we need to deal with. Um, so let's focus first in, um, in, in the maximum pressure because um, uh, we have a lot of time, for example, in the cooling time, we have 20 seconds that, that's uh, presenting a lot, uh, a long cooling cycle. So to change that, I'm considering to change the thickness of the material. So I'm, I'm going to reduce the thickness of the material and let's look at the results. So from that thickness, I need to reduce the thickness. I'm, I'm, I have prepared um, a configuration inside SolidWorks just to, to decrease the thickness to one millimeter. And let's see what's the result. Simply, the part is not be able to fill. And if you remember, we first explained what does it mean short shot. We call this situation a short shot. So whenever you are increasing the pressure, increasing the melt temperature, your part will never be able to be completely filled. So previously what do we have is a problem in the overall cycle, the overall mold cycle, and we have optimized that by reducing the thickness or maybe optimizing the thickness of the part. And next we need to look at the wood lines. So how can we prevent this this problem? So moving into that, we can see how, how many weld lines do we have currently, and we need to reduce the weld lines. The best way to do that um, is to change the gate location. And I'm having here a configurations that simply have, have changed the gate locations from the back of the part up to this point, just to be able to have the same flow front directions on on the direction of the ribs. So in this case, we will not have a lot of flow fronts meet, meeting each others. And this is, of course, will reduce the wood lines. Look into the wood lines, per perfect. So we have, we still have uh, another problem, which is the pressure. So we have a pressure of 46 or maybe 47 megapascal. So that's the next uh, question. How can we reduce the pressures? So to reduce the pressure, I'm thinking to change the material. Maybe I'm, I'm using the same material, but with a, a little bit enhancement. So I'm thinking to change the material from polycarbonate to uh, APS plus polycarbonate. So changing the material, of course, will enhance uh, that that this material, of course, it's 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 uh, having a, a better quality of. Uh, the properties of the material, I mean the mechanical properties of the material, applying the simulations, 
from the last gate with the new material and let's see the results of the pressure so we reduce the pressure from 47 to 36 which which is great and also we reduce the the overall cooling cycle from 36 or something to 22 which is really decreasing the overall mold cycle so of course we can go further and having a lot of enhancement and especially when we are thinking on on multiple cavity so or maybe when we are thinking on a family mold so thinking of the family mold that's something different because we reduced the pressure but we did not take in considerations what will be the runners are needed to fill in the cavities in in the same time and to do that we have uh, a lot of uh, steps to do in solid wax plastics and maybe you would not have time in, in that we've been hard to discuss that in details maybe we will discuss that uh, later on in the conclusion we can say that using solid wax plastics during the earliest stage of a part and mold design helps you to predict and avoid injection mold manufacturing defects eliminating costly mold reworks and improve the part quality and decrease time to market um, so um, I'm getting to the end of of my presentation for today and um, Hopefully that uh, if you if you have any question, please feel free to put it in the question area. So I will be waiting for five seconds. If you have any question, please place it in the in the working area and in, in the question area. Um, anyway, um, you know that uh, that's my email, and let me bring it to the screen. Okay, so um. I'm having a question here that's, um, is this applicable to other 3D building models like 3D printing? So 3D printing is, is a way of, um, another way of manufacturing, we call that additive manufacturing. <clears throat> and to simulate the 3D printing, we have um, another way to do that in SolidWorks, which is um, a 3D printing um, simulation. So inside SolidWorks, you can understand while even predicting the costing of the 3D printing, you can understand what will be the slices. And we have added a lot of capabilities in that in 2017. So um, if you need me to drop you a link to do that, yes, of course we can do that. So I believe you are talking about 3D printing in an FDM technology. So using injection mold is, completely different than FDM 3D printing technology. Is there any other question? Okay. Um, it seems that we reached the end of, of this today webinar. Thank you so much for attending today and um, see you in the next webinar.